let's talk China. Now that the two-day economic summit between America and China is over, it remains to be seen if any real action is going to be taken at all. Charles Horner is a senior fellow with the Hudson Institute. He is also the author of this book, Rising China and Its Postmodern Fate. Charles, welcome to Fox Business. Uh, do you think I'm that be here. there's going to be anything that actually happens from this summit, or is it going to be all sizzle, no steak? Well, I suppose there might be a little bit of stake in it in that there's a uh, projection now by the United States that there's an expectation that things might improve on the currency front. And the main news, I think, if there's to be any, is whether or not there's progress on the strategic part of the dialogue. You know, it's now called strategic and economic dialogue rather than merely strategic economic dialogue. And it remains to be seen how much progress has been made on Iran, North Korea, and other questions like that. You know, I can just put myself in the meetings, right? And Rich Edson, our own Rich Edson, interviewed Tim Geithner today. But you kind of imagine it goes something like this. Tim Geithner, hey, raise your currency. It's unfairly low. China, no. Hey, open trade. China, no. I mean, do you think that's... The, I'm being flipped, but do you think that's the way it goes? China says, no, thank you. Well, well, they say, no, thank you, but they also say, yes, no. And sometimes they say, maybe. You know, one of the old traditions of Chinese statecraft is making it appear that you're really strong and self-confident when uh, you've got lots of problems. And a lot of times with us it's a reverse, so we appear to have lots of problems, and so we are at the moment, I suppose, at a psychological disadvantage in the sense that what you read about in the newspaper are American crises, Europe crisis, Korea crisis, financial crisis, debt crisis, and so on. And what you read is, ah, Chinese serenely moving forward. And so we have a problem bringing to bear in these discussions the enormous power we do have and turning it into useful leverage. So it's always going to be very hard in negotiating with people who don't feel they have to give up any more than they need to. After all, let me just say, you know, it's a difference in dealing with a country like Japan on economic and currency issues. After all, yeah. they and we are on the same side. We're treaty allies. This is a different situation. Hey, Charles, do you think China economically is holding, you know, a Jack-9 offsuit but bluffing like they have two aces? Well, I think they have many problems, and if you pay attention to what they themselves say about their own problems, it's oftentimes very revealing. They have all kinds of problems of wealth inequality, all kinds of problems of uh, shortage of resources, all sorts of labor problems, demographic problems, migrations of tens of millions of people to cities, and various kinds of social dislocation according to that. And when the party meets, as it did last March, it will sometimes call attention to its problems, and we, of course, have not as adept as we might be in paying attention to those and seeing how those might be usable in influencing ordinary Chinese negotiating behavior. Charles Horner, we've got to leave it there, but we'll welcome you back on soon. He is the author of Rising China and Its Postmodern Fate. Thank you very much, Charles. You bet. Thank you. The rescue of Chicago